I'm looking forward to the day in about 30 years' time when, I, when someone like myself can say that they're autistic in, in an interview. And again, that's a so what situation. Five years ago, um, I um, was diagnosed with um, autism and initially um, it was a shock to me because I suddenly realised that um, uh, who I was and what I was and how I was was completely different from what I thought I was. And so I had to go through a process of really rebuilding my ego and starting to understand how and why I was different. I was firmly told by my family that under no circumstances should I talk about my autism at work um, because of the stigma that was attached to autism and how it would affect my career. And, uh, and I've become openly autistic within, within the workplace. Uh, I'm now respected for who I am, what I am, how I am. The main barriers are no longer uh, physical barriers. Uh, it's, it's often the social and cultural barriers, physical barriers that people may have. Um, it, they, they disappear when people start to see the talents and they start to see the, uh, um, the opportunities that they, they have in terms of growing and the organisation growing on the back of those opportunities. Uh, people with disabilities are often at the back of the, the queue in terms of change. However, as change occurs with other groups of people, that also benefits us. And often the, it's the softer barriers which, which, are actually, which are actually harder for our, from our point of view than the harder ones. One of the positive surprises was the way I was treated. Like I said, when I'm out and about in London, I get a lot of special treatment, but it's quite nice to put the suit on, be in a working environment and everyone to treat you as an equal and with no ex expectations other than the usual. I don't think I can sit at home all day. I, I think most people are built to be productive and you need that achievement in your life to, to feel fulfilled. So I really enjoy coming into work. I, I don't have to. I could sit at home on benefits. Um, but I get so much enjoyment and fulfilment out of work that I think a lot of disabled people desire but don't have the opportunity to fulfill. Uh, I've become well known for being able to identify solutions to problems before people even realise that there are problems, particularly in terms of uh, design of buildings. I think I do offer a, a unique insight. I obviously have experiences, uh, both daily and historical, that most employees don't. <laughs> we, I don't think they've been exploited yet. I've recently just arranged and confirmed a move to site to take on a whole new role and there's a lot of hurdles with me moving from an office base to site based offices. I think the value in, in what I had to offer over a normal able-bodied employee probably had some impact on how willing they were to take me on and how they've been very accepting of the extra challenges involved in taking me on. Um, so I hope they, they have seen the value and that's one of the reasons that they've pursued me and uh, we, we've got this move in, in, in action. I'm 
being hair impaired um, because I don't have my full hearing range. I use my other senses more, such as uh, my sight, and, you know, um, uh, and you know, senses. And what what that does what that does is I could perhaps spot something that someone maybe didn't spot, or people learn new th new methods that maybe I'd have to adapt. That that could even work for people with normal hearing. Yeah, I think I think diversity always adds value. Having a team of ten middle class white British men, it's only gonna get so far and you're gonna be limited by your your common experiences, whereas if you can mix that with everyone every every race, every creed, every disability, both genders. What you get is much greater diversity of thought. And what we do know is that, is that when you bring more diversity of thought into to everything, into the workplace, what you get is, is better quality solutions because a greater diversity of people brings that greater diversity of thought, a greater diversity of business solutions and always a better outcome for us and our customers, mm -hmm. always. So what Skanska have done is they've, they've given me the confidence to know that it's an industry that I can definitely achieve uh, my aims and goals, uh, they, they've shown me that anything's possible really. Um, you've just got to uh, overcome your problems, by, but that you have, it's not a two-way street, you have the, um, you have the employer and you've, you've got your, yourself. If you can both combine to work together, you get that, um, you get that inclusiveness and you, get that, you, you overcome solutions. If, you, if you've got lots of different solutions for different people or um, got lots of different understanding, you learn new things. And if you share that with everyone, you get that collaboration of ideas. And that is really powerful and it drives up productivity. If we continue to be primed to saying the wrong thing, or putting our foot in it or making a mistake. Whenever there's a, a change like this, that's an inevitability. And, and I think we have to be prepared to do those things and put our hands up when we get it wrong. Because if we don't do it, that will just stop us even more from making the changes that we need to make. Unfortunately, there is an inevitability that, that on these change journeys that, that we will make mistakes. But actually, part of the way that we can do that is by making ourselves better informed. And actually, I think one of the, the things that the industry needs to get its head around is, is thinking about opportunities rather than barriers. Uh, I think it's very easy to look at the reasons why it won't work rather than think about actually the, the opportunities that it brings to have people with, with different thoughts, different experiences um, that can actually help make the decision-making process better, uh, both for the company and also for our customers. The other thing I would say about disability is... is Disability comes in all shapes and sizes, it's a very broad church. Uh, and it's not just about physical disability, what we're seeing more and more is a big focus on the disabilities you can't see, in particular mental health, dyslexia, those kind of things. Um, and actually then though, again, no barrier at all if, if the support and, and the culture that's created is the right one that enables people to thrive um, mm -hmm. and that the support is put in place. Uh, I, can, I can understand the wariness. There are a lot of unknowns, there are a lot of stigmas attached that we're always going to be at hospital appointments and calling in sick and we're going to pr produce work slower, which to a certain extent is true, but everybody's, everybody's got their burdens, everyone's carrying their own challenges. Just because these people have got, got it recognised doesn't mean it's any less debilitating than somebody with uh, depression or what, what have you. What I believe is that if I didn't take the leap that I had taken and I wasn't honest about my uh, autism, um, I would be letting other people down, particularly the next generation. And therefore, I think it's imperative that I hold the door open for that generation so that they can thrive and grow. And without that, it's not just the autistic people, it's other disability groups as well and other disadvantaged groups. And it's only by um, being honest that we can make those changes and we can change the workplace so that it's much more inclusive in the future.